go from the base 10 value to the hexadecimal value. I get so worried when I see those numbers in the, in the low 200s because I'm afraid they would be coincidentally the same as one of those codes we have already used, but they're not. It's close, but it's not exactly. So if, to do this, you still do the um, place values for hexadecimal for base 16, the ones place, and the 16s place. We know we can go up to 255 with two digits, so I don't need my... 256 place but I do want you to know if you had a number like 1822 you would need some 256's you would need about uh, maybe seven of them so just know that it, you can you, you can have more than two digits in hexadecimal I, I didn't want to go crazy with the computation but you certainly can we don't need uh, any 256's if we're trying to represent 238 however but we do need some 16s. Um, 15 16s is 240, which is really close to 238. So I must need one less than that. I must need 14 16s, which is 160 and 64. That's 224. I'm doing 10 16s is 160, and 4 16s is 64. 160 and 64 is 224. That's right. But I can't. I need to. I need to remember that. Uh, in hexadecimal, 14 is the letter E. And that means I'm 14 away from my goal, 238. So I must also need 14 ones. 224 plus uh, 14 is 238. So if I need 14 ones, I also need E ones. I need E ones and E 16s. Which means that the base 10 value 238 in hexadecimal is E E. Um, that's hexadecimal. Uh, tomorrow you will be extremely challenged with all different number systems and very challenging problems, including computing directly in a number system. And that'll be a lot of fun if you dig in and uh, do your best. Try the problems first. If you get stuck, go to the video for an idea and then pause it. You know how it works. All right. Um, thanks for your work today and uh, having your pod for you tomorrow to wrap up this mini unit. Then I have something fun on Friday. I'll explain it a little bit in tomorrow's Nearpod. All right, thanks. Bye.